and demand curve slope downward. So this is how the supply curve uh, looks like. So we are saying that for the supply, price influences our willingness to offer for sale. So for the supplier, if he is going to either supply more or less, it depends on how much that he or she is going to get when he offers the price for sale. So price is the main thing that influences a supplier's willingness to offer for sale. So it says that increase in price leads to increase in quantity supplied, okay? Increase in price leads to an increase in quantity supplied and decrease in price leads to decrease in quantity supplied. So if the price is high, they will supply more, but then if the price is low, then they would also put less on the market to supply. So this creates the upward shift of the supply curve, and that is what I drew for us to, to, to let us know. So that is why we have an upward um, shift, um, upward sloping supply curve because of the positive relationship between price and the quantity uh, supplied. Okay, so that is it. Then we come to the law of supply of, of, of supply. Mm. So I, for example, assuming input costs are constant, how many cups of coffee would you offer to sell per week if the price is one, if the price is four? So let me ask you, assuming that the amount of money that you will spend in producing coffee is the same, it doesn't change. If somebody is saying that you buy the good at one CD, and another person is saying that you buy the good at four CD. If you are a supplier, what will you do? Yes, class. If you are a supplier, what will you do? Any comments? If you are a supplier, what will you do? It costs you 50 CDs to produce a good. The price has not changed. Somebody is saying the first week I'll buy one CD. Another person saying that, oh, if you sell it to me in the second week, I'm going to pay four CD. If you are a supplier, what will you do? Bismarck Aban. Hello, madam. Yes, let's hear you. Your hand is up. Um, okay, madam, uh, please. Uh, I think uh, you wait for the one who is ready for to pay the four cities. Why? Uh, because um, the demand, the, his demand has changed. Like there's an increase in demand at his end. So, um, you're talking since, about supply when you are talking about demand. Yeah. You are not doing supply. Yes. Doing supply yes. Demand. Because, because like, um, there's a, there's an increase in price mm -hmm. at his end. So he's able to, um, supply that product to him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other comments on that? Please lower your hand for me, Bismarck. Any other person with another view or to say more or add up to what Bismarck has said? Any other view? Oh, okay, so we all agree. We all agree with Bismarck that indeed the person is likely to sup, uh, supply the good when it's for. Okay. So what is the reason for the upward sloping supply? When we did demand, we explained the reason why the demand slopes upwards. Okay, the demand curve slows downwards, sorry. We explained the reason why the demand curve slows downwards, that it is as a result of income effect and substitution effect. So here to, we want to find out, is somebody is saying my volume is low and he can't hear me, is that true? Please, can you all hear me? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. So please, those yes, that madam. can't hear me, those that can't hear me, please kindly position yourself well and check your microphones from your end. So why are we saying that for the law of supply, the curve is upward sloping? 
So we have something we call law of variable proportion. And it says that the law of variable proportion states that as the quantity of one factor is increased, keeping the other factor fixed, the marginal product of that factor will eventually decline. When you are producing, you have something. So let us even use the land, land for example. Okay, if you use land and you continue to cultivate on the land, 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 it gets to a it get to a point that the returns that you get from the land what diminishes. Okay, so we are saying that more quantity is supplied only at a higher price so as to cover the increase in the production cost. So it means that if, if I'm using a particular factor of production, at the initial stage, it's true, at the initial stage, my productivity will be increasing. But but it gets to a, a time that now my productivity will now stop um, increasing. It will start diminishing. Initial price by my my productivity will be decreasing because I have sold something at a higher price. It will go to defray the production cost that I'm likely to incur in the in the future. That's why we say that for for supply we are always into higher prices, higher quantity put on the market. And one of the reason is what. I have explained, which has to do with variable proportion. Another reason for higher price, higher supply is the goal of profit maximization. Suppliers are interested in maximizing their profit. So whatever that they will do to make sure that their profit is maximized, that is exactly what they are going to do. So, and because they are driven by that mentality, they always put goods on the market when the price is high than when the price is low. So one of the reasons too has to do with what? The goal of profit maximization. I have already shown you graphically how the supply curve looks like. But on this chart, this is how the supply curve also what looks like. So this is a supply schedule. Mm -hmm. A supply schedule is a table that shows quantity supplied against the corresponding quantity. And a supply curve is a curve that shows the relationship between quantity supplied of a commodity against its various prices. So just as we have movement along demand curve and shift in demand curve, we also have a shift of the supply curve and then movement along the same supply curve. So when you are talking about movement along the supply curve, we are look, looking at the fact that it's as a result of changes in price, all other things held constant. And then a shift of the supply curve will be factors that leads to either a rightward or a backward shift of the supply curve depending on the situation. Okay, so this is a typical example of how supply curve is and this is what's how a supply schedule is yes leo let's hear you leo your hand is up leo you, you raise your hand let's hear you hello leo Okay, so he has lowered his hand. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so this is how the supply curve is. So when you talk about a supply curve, a curve which shows the various quantities of a given commodity, which an individual producer is willing to supply at a different price at a given period of time. <laughs> So that is how a supply curve looks like. So it looks at the, the product and the quantity that the individual is willing to put on the market or offer for sale at the various prices. Okay. Then we come to the market supply curve. Can somebody tell me what a market supply would be? Curve will be like. Mm. 
we already spoke about market demand. So what do you think market supply will be? Any other view? Mm, anybody with any view? Try, 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 try. You already understand what the market demand is. So what do you think market supply will be? Hello, madam. Yes. Please, it will be the summation of the various individual supply chains available in, exactly. in an economy. Thank you so much. That is an excellent one. It's just going to be a summation of the individual supply curve at the various or at the at the various prices within a particular given time. So summation of that. That is very good. So that shows the market supply curve. Okay. So we have the supply for the first person, the supply for the next person put together. Then we get the what the market supply okay so that is all that we are we are talking about so we will do calculations on some of these things in our subsequent um, lectures for all of us to appreciate the concepts behind that so this is change in quantity supply which i have already explained it follows the same analysis like that of the demand but just that here the curve is not the same because of the relationship between price and quantity supply. It's not the same as the relationship between price and quantity demand. So when you talk about change in supply, <coughs> sorry, change in quantity supplied, it is a movement along the same curve caused by changes in the price of the commodity when all other factors have, held, have been held constant. So change in quantity supplied, we are looking at movement along the same supply curve as a result of changes in the prices of that particular commodity, all other factors held constant. So here, our focus is not on the other factors. Our focus is on the price of that particular commodity we are talking about and how the supply is changing as a result of changes in the price. And initially, the price was 4 CD and they, they were at point A, buying 100 units. Now the price changes from four CD to six CDs. And now they have changed the supply to what? 150 units. So as a result of an upward shift in the price of the commodity, suppliers are now supplying more of that particular product. And this is what we call change in quantity supply, movement along the same supply curve. So it means that if price had fallen, probably had fallen from four to two, then they will not go up down. They will not go up, they will come in down. So instead of maybe producing 100, they will even be producing 80 because of the change in the, um, in the price. Then we have change in supply. So for change in supply, we are looking at what happens to supply when all other factors are not constant except the price. So what happened to supply when, for example, there is a reduction in production costs in terms of labor, when, for example, the government gives a positive a, a reduction in taxes or the government gives subsidies, what happens? And all that. So any other thing that affects supply other than the price of a particular commodity, how will the supply curve behave? Okay. So when you talk about um, change in supply is changes in other determinants of supply other than price, okay? And this one can either cause the, the demand, uh, the supply curve to either shift to the right or shift to the left. So let's have some example here. Imagine that government give producers subsidy. Eh? Let's as assume that government gives pro producers subsidy. Before we do the drawing, can somebody tell me what subsidy does for producers? If the government gives producers subsidy, what do you think will happen to producers? Any other person with any view? If the government says that now I'm giving a subsidy to all producers or I'm reducing the taxes that producers are paying, what do you think will be the effect on supply? What do you think will be the effect on supply? Yes, Hamond, your hand is up. Can we hear you? Uh, they will be able to produce more, so supply will increase. Supply will increase. Thank you so much, Hamond. So it means that 
um, when the government introduces subsidy or reduces tax, let us assume that initially, um, this is how the supply curve was. Mm. And so we have Q here. So initially, this is how the supply curve was. It's at X zero. Mm. And the government says that, oh, because you are doing so well, I want to give you subsidy or I want to reduce tax. What will happen is that supply will increase. So the shift, the curve will now shift outwards, shift to what we call shift to the, oh, sorry, my cursor is, my pencil is just misbehaving. So initially we are this way. So this is the old supply. We have the price here. We have the quantity over here. And now because of the subsidy, now what will happen to supply that the supply will increase. Supply will increase to now towards S1, indicating that there is an increase in supply. So they will no longer be on this supply curve, but they will move to a higher supply curve to show that the quantity and all that will increase. What if the government says that I am increasing taxes? What if the government says that I am increasing taxes? What will happen to supply? Be what will happen shift. to supply? Um, can we hear um, Asamwa? Asamwa Kelvin and yes, Richard Yes. So yeah, what will happen yeah. to supply? Supply will decrease. Supply is definitely going to decrease. So in, initially, let us assume that initially supply is here. OK the price being here quantity being here because there is an increase this is the initial supply because there is an increase in taxes now the supply curve will come back to contract mm. so now supply will fall then we come back to this level okay meaning that quantity will what the quantity that will be offered for sale will reduce so this shows a uh, a negative shift of the supply curve, okay, leading to a reduction in the quantity supplied. So that is that is what the change in supply is about. So the change in supply is about a bodily shift of the supply curve, whilst change in quantity supply is a movement along the same supply curve. That is what uh, we are talking about. Then we have the supply function. It also shows the relationship. Okay, so when you talk about the supply function of a good, it describes how much of a good will be produced at alternative prices of the goods. Mm -hmm. So like the relationship that exists between quantity supplied and other factors that has a tendency of influencing uh, supply okay so this is the quantity supply of x and we are saying that this quantity is dependent upon the price dependent upon the price of x is dependent upon the price of other commodity dependent upon u h it can be as many as possible but then when you are talking about the function we are just trying to find out what are the other factors that has the tendency of affecting the quantity that can be supplied of a particular uh, commodity? So for example, here we are saying that PX is the, the price of good X, PY is the price of uh, uh, other related good, W is the price of inputs, H is the value of some variables that affect supply like technology, like taxes, like producer expectations. There are many. So there's, the function normally shows the relationship that exists between these conditions and how each of them can affect the quantity that can be put on the market for sale so far as that particular product is concerned. Okay. So now we come to what we call equilibrium. So initially when we started, we made mention of the fact that when we talk of demand, demand moves downwards, okay? So when you go to the market, we have two groups of people. We have consumers 
those who are demanding the goods and services. And then we have the suppliers, those who are producing the goods and services. And they are all behaving differently. The individual is saying that I will buy more when the price is low. The supplier is saying that I will sell more when the price is high. So does that mean that exchange will not take place in the market? No, exchange will always take place in the market, but then it will take place at a point whereby the consumer and the producer now agrees to meet each other at a specific point. Then that we call what the equilibrium point. So probably the equilibrium point is known as the point of intersection where both demand and supply meet. And it is also known as the market clearing point. Eh? So we have the supply curve sloping upwards like this, mm -hmm. and then demand curve sloping downwards like this. So the point of intersection is what we call the equilibrium point. So this becomes the equilibrium price. Mm -hmm. So this particular price now becomes the equilibrium price. So I'm indicating the equilibrium point as point E. And then this becomes the equilibrium what? Quantity. So this is equilibrium price. And this becomes the what? The equilibrium quantity. Okay. This becomes the equilibrium quantity. So it means that at this particular point, that is what we are calling point E, the price that the consumer is willing to pay is the same as the price that the supplier is willing to accept. And they will all agree to um, accept this unit of output. So that is what we term as the equilibrium condition. Please, any other question before I move on? Any question be for me no, before please. I move on? But no, do you understand what is going on here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, madam. Madam, the, the supply curve, I don't understand. What is it about the supply curve that you don't understand? Can you come? Hello? Who said the supply curve? He doesn't understand. Please, let me hear you. Please let me hear you so that we can solve your problem. Don't just say you don't understand and you, sh you mute yourself and you don't talk back. Who said he doesn't understand the supply? I do. Okay. Please, if you are on board, just unmute yourself and respond. Who said he doesn't understand the supply? Madam, I know the voice. Joel Consa. So, Joel, where is Joel? Joel Kwanza, where are you? Has he dropped? Has Joel dropped? Madam, please move on. Madam, he has dropped. Maybe his data is. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't understand the whole process. <laughs> okay, so when he comes on board, you should just find so that we can move on. So what we are saying is, what we are saying is, when you talk of demand, we were saying that the demand curve slopes downwards like this, where the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So this is how consumers behave. Consumers are always looking for lower price so that they can buy more. So this is what the demand curve looks like. And then the supply curve, which is for, the supply curve, which is for the, um, the producers, is upward sloping, indicating that for them, they will only supply more when the price is high. Okay. So we have the, they have their curve sloping upwards. Mm. They will only supply more when the price is high. So you go to market and you meet two different sets of people. We have the producers who are motivated by higher prices. And then we have the consumers who are also motivated by lower prices. 
But does that mean that trade should not go on? Or does that mean that exchange will not go on? Definitely exchange will go on. So how would exchange go on? Then it means that the two of them must come together and agree to, to deal at a specific point. So the point whereby both the consumers represented by the demand curve and then suppliers represented by the supply curve meet is what we call the equilibrium point. So the specific point, the equilibrium point price is what we call the equilibrium price. And then the quantity with which they agree to trade at that part of, at that point of intersection is what we call the equilibrium quantity. Okay, so we have the zero here. We have the, the quantity here. And then we have price on top. So this point is what we term as the equilibrium point. So it means that at point E, both the suppliers and the consumers are willing to exchange. So this is what we call the equilibrium price and then the equilibrium quantity. That is the point of intercession. Okay. So when you talk of equilibrium, equilibrium is a condition or a state in which economic forces are balanced. So anytime we say equilibrium, we are saying that the economic forces are balanced. Either forces, the demand and supply forces, they are all balanced. Then we are talking about equilibrium. So at the, at the equilibrium, we are saying that these economic variables remain unchanged from their equilibrium values in the absence of what external influence. So we are we are saying that in, an, in the absence of external influence, we expect that these economic variables or these economic forces should be balanced. That is what we are talking about, equilibrium. So economic equilibrium may also be defined as the point at which supply equals demand for a product, which I have already explained. The point at which supply equal demand for a product the point at which supply equal demand for a product with the equilibrium price existing where the hypothetical supply and demand curve intersect so that is what i had already drawn to explain to you so at at equilibrium at a specific price, quantity demand equal quantity supply. And then that, that particular price where quantity demand is equal to quantity supplied is what we call the market clearing price. So equilibrium price is also known as market clearing price. So at market clearing price, there is nothing like shortages or surpluses. Once there is shortages and surpluses, then you cannot be talking about market clearing price. So at equilibrium points, at equilibrium price, that is a market clearing price, we expect that price, we expect that quantity demand and quantity supply must be the same at that particular uh, price. So at the market clearing price, equilibrium quantity, demand is the same as supply so if equilibrium quantity is 50 it is the same as supply which is 50 so that the market is cleared so the price is a competitive price it's a competitive market sorry the price in a competitive market is determined by the interaction of all buyers and sellers in the market so as i indicated this price the, this equilibrium price is determined by the consumers and the suppliers or the buyers and then the sellers. So the buyers are the ones that uses the demand curve. The sellers are the ones that uses the supply curve. So when the two meet forming the intercession, they determine the equilibrium price or they determine the market price or they determine the market clearing price. 
So that is it. So this is a typical example of what I do here. Okay. So at a specific price where quantity demanded equal quantity supplied. So you see that at price five, hmm, at price five, quantity demanded is 150 and quantity supplied is also 150. So at this point is what we call the market clearing point. Any point above or below the equilibrium price, there is a problem. And I will explain the problem to you. So when, the, when, when you have a condition either above or below the market clearing price, then there is always a situation. So before we come to this diagram, the next diagram, let me use this uh, opportunity to explain this for you so that when you get to the diagram, you would understand better. Okay, so we, we have this. Mm. Please, are you following? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Okay. So yes, we madam. have the we have the price. We have the quantity here. Okay. And then we have the demand sloping downwards. We have the demand sloping downwards. And then we have the supply sloping upwards then we have the points of intersection so here is what we are terming as the market clearing price that is the equilibrium price being here and then we have the equilibrium quantity which is the same which is the quantity the same as demand and supply so we have this point of intersection point e being the market clearing point where there is no shortage or surplus and this is the demand curve. Okay. And I'm saying that any point below or above this curve, there is a problem. So let's assume that there is a point above this curve. When there is a point above this curve, what is happening? Look at where the demand curve is. The demand curve is here. And then the supply curve is here. So here, what is happening is that Demand is less than supply. Okay. Demand is less than supply. So it means that what is happening here? If demand is less than supply, what is happening? Hello. And nobody is talking. You go to the market. Hello. Oh, sorry. You go to the market to buy something, and demand is less than supply. Hmm? Meaning that. Hi. Surplus. Thank you. There is surplus. Mean that there are a lot of goods on the market. There are feedback, so please mute your microphone if you finish speaking. So you go to the market to buy a product, and you realize that the demand that the amount that the consumer needs is less than what the producers have put on the market. Definitely, there's it means that there are what there are surpluses. And if there is surplus in the market, what happens? diagram where we have the dns uh, where demand is less than supply and because of that at the top here we have surplus what will happen is that now price will start falling so when price falls consumers will now be motivated to buy more until it comes to this point then the market is cleared 
So here, above the equilibrium price, we know that the equilibrium condition is here. So above the equilibrium price, there is surplus. And once there is surplus, price falls, and then the market cleared, so they now come back to the original um, position. What about um, below? Below the below the um, the equilibrium price, what is happening here? Below the equilibrium price, what is happening? Can someone tell me? Demand becomes greater than the supply. Good. Thank you very much. Demand is greater than supply. So price increases. A price will increase. So it means there is a situation. And I have shown you how all this situation can be rectified in order for them to attain their equilibrium position. That is a good one. Thank Let you. Let me have a question. Okay, so go ahead. Yes. Please, um, does it imply that with the above, above situation, does it imply that there will be a positive shift in the demand and the negative shift in supply? So I'm coming. Um, so you are talking about here, when there is soft surplus. Yes, is it when please. there is a surplus? Yes, please. So when there is a surplus, what will happen is that because price is falling now, suppliers will supply less. less. So okay. negative shift, yes. Yeah. So it, they will reduce the quantity that they are supplying. All right. Because for the producer, once the price starts falling, once price starts falling, they will reduce the, the quantity that they are supplying. And by the consumers will be willing to buy more. So they will, they will buy till they clear all the excess from the market. Then we come back to the equilibrium. And below it, where there is shortages, when there is shortages, price goes up. So when price goes up, now the producers will also be motivated. Now they will be producing more. So they will flood the market for right. their goods. Do you understand? Yes, then, please. Uh -huh, and that will also lead to the clearing of the, the market. Then they will come back to attain the normal equilibrium point. Oh, OK. OK. So I hope it's clear now. Yes, please. OK, thank, thank you. you. Welcome. So this is what I was trying to explain, the surpluses and then the shortages. So we realize that above, as we all, we all indicated, we have the demand being lesser than the supply. And because of that, there is surplus. And once there is surplus, you see the red line, the red arrow indicating that price will now fall till it reaches the equilibrium point. And then when there is shortages, as we see here, down here, you see the green line. The green line will say that during shortages, prices are supposed to what, rise in order to meet um, the, 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 the equilibrium price. So we have something we call the Marshallian quantity adjustment. So under the Marshallian adjustment, a difference between what the consumer are willing to pay and what the producers require to cover at least their cost of production. So I think that when we meet next week, we will delve into details on this Marshallian, Marshallian um, equilibrium. I, I have another stuff. It's almost 10 minutes to talk. So I'll pause here, but I'll share this slides with you so that God willing, next week, we can continue from there and then continue with elasticity. So any question for me? Any question for Madam. me? Yes. Please, um, comparing countries where prices coordinate economic activities automatically and, and 